Hello everyone. All right, the beta is done for Fallout 76. I played about a little bit over 20 hours in the game. Last time I did this was 10 hours, about 10 hours after, and <clears throat> from there I gave my opinion at that point in time. Now I'm doing my opinion after the beta has finished. <clears throat> Sorry, <clears throat> having a little bit of issue with the cop. Anyways, so, like I said, have a little bit better opinion from beta perspective, and I'm going to let you all know things that I like, things I disliked, some interesting or fun things that I kind of ran into, things I would like to see in the future, and an overall consensus, kind of like a, 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 kind of like a number out of 10 of what I feel about the beta and the game so far. <clears throat> <clears throat> Sorry. So once again, I'm going to go ahead and start off with my likes, then I'll go to dislikes, and then just kind of go from there. As far as my likes, the first one I'm going to go ahead and talk about is exploring. There are a wide variety of locations, and they are all over the map. Bethesda has said that there's the map is four times larger than Fallout 4. In honesty, I kind of do believe it. I went through the forest and more than northern areas of the map. I didn't touch the Great Divide. I didn't touch the Cranberry Bog. I didn't touch any of the southern areas. And that's just over 20 hours worth of me being in the center or in the north or in the west. So I got to touch pretty much about a quarter of the map, if not just a little bit larger than that. And going from, you know, having a few different towns, each of them being different, like, uh, Flatwoods, then you have Morgantown, then you have you know, just Grafton <clears throat> to the north, and then you have um, the city where, or town where the Mothman is. <clears throat> huge, a huge, like I said, variety in all those areas. And you have lumber mills, you have workshops, you have uh, vault Tech University, you have an airport, you have multiple different uh, railroad centers, and so much more. Water parks, entertainment parks, just, like I said, I can't, I can't understate the amount of variety exploring-wise. Now, next thing I'm going to go into is lore. This is something that is also in my dislikes, too, and I will cover that when I get to my dislikes. But as far as lore, there is a lot to learn. <clears throat> there's a lot to read, and there's a lot to hear. You know, reading, you have terminals, you have notes, you have things that you can just kind of, kind of just kind of read out in the open and <clears throat> see how things kind of went. You have hearing, you have your uh, hollow tapes that you can hear from. <clears throat> you have things like the <clears throat> survivor stories from the Flatwoods people. And even, I believe, up in Morgantown. You have vault Tech University, which has <clears throat> a decent amount of lore in and of itself and gives a couple of quests to go out. One of them being a girl that is going out and trying to find the cryptids. You have things that actually happen at vault Tech. You have how the Dean... And I'm going to go ahead and say right now, spoilers for people that don't want to hear this, <clears throat> if you don't want to hear it, go ahead and just click off the video, because I'm probably going to talk about various spoilers throughout this entire thing. Uh, so go ahead and do that now. I'm going to go ahead and continue. You have the dean who basically screwed over a student's entire thesis and entire vault project just because he could. <clears throat> the student came up with a paste that is supposed to be very nutritious you find out from the terminal from the Dean that the Dean found the found the paste quite bland, but then he went ahead and added in a additive that would give arterial damage. And you find out in the in the vault itself from the overseer's terminal, quote unquote overseer's terminal, which is the student that it was causing the arterial walls to harden and then crack. <clears throat> Which, yeah, 
I cannot state how much lore there actually is in this. And once again, there are dislikes to this as well, which I will go over later. The next thing I'm going to cover is the variety of creatures. You have the standards, you have death claws, rad roaches, you have ghouls, you have uh, rad stag, you have quite a bit of, you know, the normal creatures, yaogwai, but then also you have quite a bit of new creatures as well. And I'm also including cryptids in this as well. But you also have things like ticks. I can't really remember another game where there were ticks in it. You have... Now it is a... I think it's a cryptid. The Snallygaster. Uh, you have the Mothman. You have the Grafton Monster. The Headless One. Which actually I ran across a very interesting bug on that one. Um, <clears throat> kind of a side note really quickly. When one of the events was going on in Grafton, they have it so that way the robots are supposed to parade around the Grafton monster. The robots ran into Supermans, which were which started attacking each other. And the Grafton monster was just walking around doing whatever the heck he wanted. When I finally took out the robots, and I finally took out the Supermans, <clears throat> well, most of the robots, I went to go find the Grafton monster. And when I started searching for him, he was not on the ground, uh, not on the ground street where he was patrolling. He was up on a third story, up on the third story building, inside a room, and he couldn't leave it. So needless to say, yes, I did actually kill it. Yes, it was really easy. Unfortunately, one of my sh one of my weapons broke. It was a shotgun. But all I had to do to kill the robots that were patrolling up there was to leave mines. And yes, they did run into them. Yes, they did get uh, they did die to them, and it made the entire event really kind of easy. Now, what I was originally just going to do was go to the top of the building and snipe the thing to death. But like I said, anyways, going back to the variety of creatures, there's just a whole mess of them. I mean, we got the scorch, and the lore behind the scorch. That one I'm not going to really kind of go into. That one I think is just kind of a special thing you guys need to find out on your own if you haven't already. But there's an entire thing from Morgantown that you find out about them. <clears throat> and even, I think, the AVR Medical Center, I think, a little bit later on. That scenario I haven't hit yet, but I've also watched other videos and people playing just and kind of learn from there. Uh, next, I'm going to go into the variety of weapons. <clears throat> Something I find kind of fun are the golf clubs. Yes, you can modify them. Yes, you can scrap them, get different mods for them, and some of them are actually kind of interesting. There are various knives. You have Bowie knives. You have the machete. Yeah, the machete was in the previous games. Bowie knife, I can't really remember being in a game. Uh, I believe you have a serrated knife. I believe that was in Fallout 4. You have bone clubs. You have cultist blades. You have the variety of guns that are in. New ones and old alike. I mean, you still have the Fat Man. You still have the 10 millimeter pistol. You still have the 44. You still have all that sort of stuff. But they also have, <clears throat> you know, newer ones as well, which I kind of like. You have the ability to craft different uh, with guns if you have the actual plan for the gun. And this is also armor too. If you have the recipe you can craft according to your level. So if you get to level 10 and you have a level 1 uh, piece of armor or a piece of, or a weapon, you can craft it up to level 10 and then add the mods that you know for that weapon onto that weapon to make it that much more powerful. So this is something that was that was different than Fallout 4 where you just have a weapon and then you just add mods to it. This one, the level also adds uh, difficulty to either get hit, you know, to be able to take damage or adds additional damage or something else onto a weapon. Next thing I'm going to talk about are events. This is also something that I have in my dislikes as well, and once again I will go over that. The events. I like the fact that they, that they are spread out. Now there are two or three in a certain area, and that I'll cover later. But I like the fact that in the north there's at least three or four different, three, four or five different events. The first town you go to, you have an event that uh, that deals specifically with robots and trying to change their their parameters. You have events in other areas. You have the messenger, which you talk to a robot and then he leads you off to where he needs to go. 
So I like all I like the fact that there's just a bunch of these different events, and I also like the fact that it's not just clustered in one area, but it's all over. <clears throat> Going on to my next like, are the locations. There are certain locations that have really fun events. Camp McClintock. Yes, I had a video on this. It was called Battle, Camp, eh, Battle at Camp McClintock. I love the fact that you can try to join the army and the fact that it's all, you know, quote unquote automated. Where you go through a patriotism test. You have to figure out who's starting to have communist tendencies and start or having communal thoughts. I like the fact that you had to go ahead and go through the shooting range. I like the fact that you had to go through a um, like an agility style course where you had to go over tires, you had to go under barbed wire, you had to run across a uh, run across various beams, and then you had to climb a tower. I like that. And then I like the fact that the last thing in it was a live fire exercise. Now I thought I was going to be a lot harder because you know, because the way I've seen it, people had issues with it. But I was a higher level than what those other people had done it at, and it was a lot easier for me. <clears throat> now the last of my likes I'm going to go through is the camp. I love the fact that it's mobile, that you can pick it up and place it someplace else wherever you need it. I love the fact that there's a ton of places you can put them. Now you can't put them next to actual locations, but you can walk a short distance away. You can put it out on a road where people travel and people can visit your camp they can use your stash now they're not going to pull stuff from your stash specifically they're going to pull from their own you can eh, they can use your workshops you can use their workshops i love that <clears throat> and eventually i'd love to see and eh, i'll cover that later uh, i love the fact that there's a variety of things to build the workshops the buildings you can make from wood from and from a very eh, from a variety of other different things Excuse me. And I love the fact that they can be very useful when needing to scrap items and hold your items. Your stash is very, very important. There's another thing about the stash which I will cover later. So from here, I am going to go to my dislikes. The first thing I'm going to cover, like, eh, like I said before, is lore. There is a lot in some, in some areas, and sometimes there is just nothing in other areas. Flatwoods is one example, one great example of an area where there is just an overabundance of lore and an overabundance of things to not only read, but also hear. You have at least five to eight people who have their, who have their own survivor stories that you listen to every single one of them. You have the overseer who has left her own little, uh, her own little log inside the uh, Flatwoods Church. I believe it's a church? Yeah, it's a church. You have the overseer who left her own uh, who left her own log inside the nearby like greenhouse type place. So I mean there's a lot that is there. That's not including notes. There's a ton of notes on recipes, on events that the responders that were having there there's notes inside terminals, and there's not just one. There's a variety of them. Same thing with eh, same thing with the greenhouse area next door. There's a ton of them. Morgantown. There are there are hollow tapes there that you can hear. There's a few of them actually that are there. There's terminals that you can read there. Once again, there's a variety of them. There's notes that you have there. <clears throat> so I mean, areas where there's just a lot. And then you have areas like, oh, I'm going to go ahead and say the West Virginia. I'm going to kind of go back to this one because it's an area. It's the West Virginia Lumber Company. It's in the very top left part of the map. And I don't really remember seeing any notes there. I don't really remember seeing any terminals there. I don't really remember there being any hollow tapes there. And this is a big area. And this is a big area. I mean, there's multiple different buildings. There's outhouses. There's small little buildings. There's just a whole bunch of stuff that's there, but there's no lore. There's also areas in between, um, going from one place to another, where there's just nothing. Now, yeah, locations-wise, kind of a eh, kind of you're gonna hit that, and you can't 
place area upon area upon area, but at least in some of these places, please just have at least a little bit. You know, something that happened to a person or a responder that was seen being holed up there after being attacked by raiders or just something to make it just a little, just to spice up the area just a little bit more. It doesn't have to be that much. That's kind of my thing about lore. My next thing I'm going to cover is carry capacity and stash size. For carry capacity, the first the first thing I am going to say is I believe that is not enough. I understand you can increase your stash size by increasing your strength. I understand that there are perk cards to lower how much you know lower the percentage of what um, weapons cost, of what armor you know is, of what your junk weighs, of what your aid weighs. I understand that. I think that it should just be up by not that much actually, maybe 25 or 50 spots. Like I said, and the next thing, stash size. Yes, Bethesda has said that they do intend to increase stash size in the future. They didn't say how much and they didn't say when, but the stash size right now is way too low. 400. By the time I was level 13, that stash size was done. I was filled, including in my actual. Um, my own carry capacity as well. So after a certain point, you really have to weigh what you want to keep and what you want to throw out. And unfortunately, I'm going to cover something else in the future, but unfortunately, I'm going to have to throw out higher level weapons and higher level armor because I'm probably just going to get that later on anyways. And sometimes that, that helps out a lot. Now, I will say as a tip, if you're starting to get really overburdened by having a lot of junk in your stash, you can go to a, I think it's an engineer's workbench, where you make, yeah, where you can make a ammo, and you can put things in bulk. It doesn't save a whole lot, to be honest. You might save a pound or three or five at most <clears throat> from having just one stack. And five is being really highly generous too. Um, the build allocation for your um, for your camp is not enough. One thing about that I hate is the fact that turrets take up way too much of the build budget size. I have six or seven turrets. They take up roughly eighty, maybe yeah, about eighty percent of my build budget. And I do have all the workbenches out. I do have two uh, generators out. And I do have a water purifier out. And that's pretty much everything that I can have out, including my stash. I'm the type of person, and I'll put my, area, I'll put my camp in areas where there will be enemies because I need to get back to a certain area. Or it is really low, it is local and it is very convenient because I know I'm going to be probably getting over encumbered really quickly. Because like I said, my stat and my carry capacity and my stash size is already maxed out. The next thing I'm going to cover, I know this is a lot, I am sorry. Next thing I'm going to cover are the events. I sometimes feel bombarded by them. There are areas where you can have two or three events pop up at the same time and they will show up on the top right part of my screen and I can go ahead and they'll show up. If I'm already on a quest and I'm trying to do that, I don't want other things popping up on my top on the top right part of my screen. Now I have a workaround around I have a workaround for this. Don't have them automatically pop up, but have something so that way if you want to, you can go to a robot or a terminal or something and have the players be able to in instigate the event to start. This will cut back on having things just randomly pop up on your um, quest log by a ton. <clears throat> like I said, a lot of different things popping up kind of gets agitating, at least to me, after a while. The next thing I'm going to cover for my dislikes. For me, I'm trying to get back into doing YouTube videos. <clears throat> so, having the radio on can possibly get not only me, but other YouTube creators 
dinged by copyright claims by the companies that own the music. I've had this already happen three times in two different videos. <clears throat> it was just a copyright claim. There was a tiny bit of the music in the background you can barely hear, but it still got dinged for a, a ding for a copyright claim. And I know I'm not the only one that has had this happen. There's other creators I'm sure that has had this happen to them as well. I would honestly, I have a workaround for this as well. It's attached to the effects um, audio setting. I don't believe it should be in the effects audio settings. I believe that any radio, whether it's your Pit Boy or in game world radios, should be attached to the radio audio setting. If you move that all the way down, you shouldn't be able to hear the radio, period. Give me a second. So, the next thing I'm going to go ahead and cover in my dislikes are the quest rewards. People might go, quest rewards, why are you going to go ahead, eh, why are you going to whine or possibly bitch about that? The only thing I'm going to bitch about them is the fact that sometimes what they give you is way too high level. I got a level 25 piece of armor when I was level 10. Now, if I'm level 10 through 14 and I get a level 15 piece of armor or weapon I'm not going to really whine about that at least I know in a few levels I'm going to go ahead and be able to um, be able to either wear it or be able to use it as a weapon I'm not really concerned about that but when I have something that's nearly 15 levels higher than me I'm most likely either going to sell it or I'm going to go ahead and scrap it and if it's a legendary, I don't think I can actually scrap it. Because I tried to scrap a legendary before and it didn't let me do it. So that might be a bug, might not be. Not sure. <clears throat> the last part of my dislikes are the mods. And I'm speaking about mods on weapons and also mods on the armor. You cannot unequip them. If you have a mod on a weapon, like a scope, you can't just take it off and then be able to put it on a different weapon. No. You know, or a weapon of the same type that is higher level. You can't do that. You have to actually just create the next uh, create the next mod. The other thing about this is is that going from let's say a short scope on a hunting rifle to a long scope on a hunting rifle, you don't get any scrap back from the short scope. That's another thing that I dislike. <clears throat> if I can't at least unequip it, I should be able to get something back from it. Or be able to use it, or be able to have the the components that created the small scope be able to be put towards the large scope. Something of those effects would actually be kind of nice. So with that, that's the end of my dislikes. I'm going to go into some interesting or fun things that I and also a roommate came across. The first thing I'm going to talk about is I was walking along a road and I was going... I was in the north or northwest uh, part of the map. I was just walking along the road, and I suddenly see a iBot start floating towards me. And I go ahead and open my, you know, pull up my rifle, scope it, and I see that it's not hostile. It's yellow to me. I'm thinking, okay, whatever. It's just doing whatever. So I start, you know, continue walking forward, and then I start seeing all these rats start appearing behind it, and it's not like they were like. Well, they're kind of grouped up, but they are all in single file line. And then I start hearing pipe music playing. And I have, um, I have captions on. So I see, you know, in my caption underneath it says flute playing. And I just had to start laughing because I'm realizing, oh my god, this I bought is being a pipe piper. <clears throat> it makes me wish at that point in time I had actually been recording it because that got quite a laugh out of me. And it also kind of made me tilt my head. It was kind of nice to see something just different, random, <clears throat> that was, you know, just out in the world. Uh, the next thing I'm going to go ahead and cover is uh, something that actually happened to me. When I was going to the West Virginia Lumber Company, uh, there was a truck that had a whole bunch of um, barrels spilled over, and there was nothing next to it. So I just walked right by, didn't think anything of it, because there was really nothing there. Well, on my way back, and I had 
didn't have any disconnects or anything like that. And I'm coming back, and suddenly I see four mannequins just all of a sudden are there at that specific location. I stopped, looked at the four mannequins, kind of went, wait a minute, those weren't there before. And I'm getting closer, and two of them are clothed, two of them aren't, but all four had a vase right at their feet. And then I see a green trunk kind of off to the side. So I open the trunk, and there's a note that basically says, this is for the people that, you know, used to be here, that used to, they used to actually walk this road, used to actually live here. This is for the memory of them, which I thought that was, it was really kind of cool just to see something different like that, but it was also kind of creepy because it wasn't there when I originally walked past it. <clears throat> um, a roommate of mine ran across a robot that just read him Cinderella. He walked up to it, the robot read him Cinderella, and just went off on uh, went off on its own thing. <laughs> and uh, lastly, another thing I actually ran into was a prize bot. He came up to me, said, "Congratulations, you had won." Uh, $50 prize from some sort of contest gave me um, gave me old world money and it just went off on his thing. <laughs> and it was actually interesting. So those are fun and interesting things that I ran across. Um, and actually the West Virginia Lumber Company, the Four Mannequins, that's in my uh, Battle at Camp McClintock video. I'll probably leave a uh, link in the uh in the description below for that video. <clears throat> but, next thing I'm going to go ahead and see, or, or talk about, are things that I would like to see in the future. And there's quite a bit of them. So, once again, sorry for the length of this video, but I'm going to try to go through this as fast as I can. The first one is, is I would love to see more roaming traders. Yes, I ran across the Superman that is a trader. Unfortunately, I did not see his Brahmin called Mumu. That was probably someplace else. But I'd love to see more, you know, Roaming trader, you know, bots, super mutants, or heck, maybe even an NPC ghoul every now and then. Just something different. Um, might have something, you know, unique to them. They only sell uh, junk, or they only sell weapons, or they only sell plants. You know, just something different. Um, eventually, for my camp, I would love to be able to create robot vendors. Once again, like I said before... I like to put my camp sometimes in areas where that can be well-traveled. And if I have things that I want to go ahead and sell, yeah, I'm going to go ahead and put up a camp between the Overseer's Camp and uh, Flatwoods and go ahead and put up a small vendor there so that way people walking by can see, you know, hey, this person's got something to sell. Oh, this is something that I don't have. I can go ahead and buy it. Or I have an excess of, am of ammunition for this type of gun. I'm going to go ahead and sell it. That would be really kind of nice. Um, eventually, I'd love to see some NPCs in the world to kind of show that the, there's improvement in the world that the players, you know, that the players are creating. There's a little bit more that I'm going to go on a little bit later towards this. Um, after this next thing, for the camp, I would love to have a bigger stash. Once again, Bethesda has said that they do plan on implementing this. They just didn't say when, and they didn't say how much, how you know, how much bigger the stash is going to be, how much more carry, you know, capacity it has. Uh, I would love to be able to build more in the camp. The allocation right now is not enough. Some other people might not be having the issue, but once again, I like, I'm the type of person I like to build a lot. And not being able to do that kind of hinders me in certain ways. The other thing is, is I would love to have a builder, uh, a builder, a bigger build area. So that way, once again, I can build more. I can build out more. I can build, you know, if I'm on a... If I decide to, you know, take out my camp on a hillside because that's where I need it and it's a lot, and it's a lot safer than anything else around, and there's not that whole lot of, you know, not a whole lot of uh, flat areas, at least I have more, more room to actually work with. Um, the next thing goes back to what I said before the camp thing. I would love to see the world change due to the actions of players. Now this can be based off an average of what each player has done, what they've killed, not killed, built, you know, etc. So if we take all the players of the game for, you know, throughout PC, Xbox One, PlayStation, and a vast majority have completed the responders quest line, then there should be more responder stuff out there in the world. Or start actually having, you know, responder NPCs or something like that. 
or you know just and you know bots or something of the sort to show that there's a bigger influence there. Um, if people are going after death claws because they drop black titanium, you know more, then it's a little bit harder to find a death claw. You know they might be able to spawn in certain areas, but maybe that spawn area is a lot is a lot smaller because how many people are going after them. Same thing with like Yao Guai. I have not run into a Yao Guai yet. And I'm pretty sure they're in the southeast part of the map or just different areas. But I haven't run into a Yao Guai yet. So if that, not many people are killing Yao Guai, then well, maybe that area that they spawn you know, should be bigger or there should be more spawning in that specific area. It would be kind of interesting to see. You know, just little things. It doesn't have to be, you know, humongous, you know, the world is completely changing, but just little small things just to kind of show that, you know, something's going on. Um, I would love to see more lore in areas that have little or none. There is so much more that can be done in areas like the West Virginia lumber mill, um, around Grafton specifically, I don't think I ran into that many um, lore pieces except for the except for the couple of events, which I really don't count that as lore all per se, except for maybe the uh, the protesters, but even then, not that much, you know, except for maybe the mayor. I would love to see more when it comes to that sort of stuff. You know, lore. Put something more in there. Have more areas that actually have lore. You know, even if it's a small story about, you know, a responder having to run to a location, kind of board himself up a little bit, and, ha you know, try to keep himself from getting killed. Just a little note here and there would be so much better than just having nothing for an entire, you know, entire area or region. Uh, the next thing, once again, I'm going to go back to radios. Please, make, they should make, uh, Bethesda should make them attach to the radio sound option, not the effects. Once again, you people that are trying to record videos for YouTube, we could get dinged for uh, for copyright claims because of the music. <clears throat> There's only four more things here, so I'm going to try to go through uh, through them. Scrapping a weapon or armor. Um, if you scrap a weapon or armor that you do not have a plan for, that you cannot make, there should be some sort of uh, chance to be able to learn how to make the weapon, even if it is a small chance. But still, you're going to be finding multiple different, uh, multiple different, you know, issues of that uh, of that weapon. So there should be some sort of a chance to be able to make it. You know, be able to reverse engineer the damn thing. Have that be a perk where you can, where if you find a weapon that you do not know how to make, you can reverse engineer it to have a chance to be able to uh, be able to make it. Um, random. I would like to see random encounters similar to the wacky wasteland encounters in New Vegas. You know, something where it goes off of, you know, your luck, where you ra randomly come across it. Or if, you're, or if your character becomes highly irradiated, you're kind of out of your mind, so you're going to see something kind of wacky or fun. <clears throat> that would be kind of cool. Um, there's voting booths inside the game in various different cities that have absolutely, from what I've seen so far, have absolutely no, nothing that you can do with them. This would be a great idea, a great way for Bethesda to be able to have, you know, to get, you know, feedback, you know, from in-game polls, you know, things they would, you know, players would like to see. Yeah, can it break the lore of the game a little bit? Yes, but it's a way for the players to actually give feedback or be able to do a poll on what they would like to see next without having to write it in the, with, in the forums. And it's more of a direct connection to what, you know, direct connection to Bethesda itself. Uh, last one is a scrapbook. Sounds weird, but actually it has it has a basis behind it. It's a place where you can organize your notes that the player picks up by location, and you can make it searchable by quest lines or by people or something of the sorts. This would help out where you have 40, 50, 100 notes, and you're trying to find one you can, if you know the location or if you know the quest line, you can then narrow it down that much more. That would be such, eh, that would be such a better, you know, better idea instead of just having everything in just the notes area and you're having to just go note by note by note searching for it. So with that, I'm going to come to my final evaluation of the game for so far. For it being a beta, I am going to give it an eight out of ten. 
did I run into la uh, to lag issues every once in a great while? The biggest issue I ever had was disconnecting, and that was at least four or five times every time I played the game, except for the two hours. I maybe disconnected two or three. And some of those times I couldn't get back into the game, I had to fully disconnect out. But with it being a beta, it was a lot better than what I thought it would be. I thought there would be a lot more issues, I thought there would be a lot more uh, bugs and other stuff like that. Are there still quest bugs out there? Yes, my roommate was talking about a bug he was running into with um, a token machine up in Grafton. I saw one early on in the beta that somebody was playing on the Xbox One when it came to uh, Camp McClintock where they talked to, and this was uh, Matty Plays, I believe it was, where he was talking to the uh, drill sergeant at Camp McClintock after he finished the life fire exercise. And it just kept going, well, well. And it did that over and over and over again until he just stood next to the drill sergeant and then the drill sergeant just randomly initiated the talk with him. So, are there still bugs in the game? Yeah, of course there's still bugs in the game. But I hope that more of them get ironed out by the time the actual game comes out, and I hope some of these issues that I talked about that I would like to see in the future get done sometime in the future. Anyways, with that, I'm going to go ahead and cut off this video. It has been long, I know, but at the same point in time, I wanted to kind of give my entire viewpoint on this. So with that, thank you for watching this video. If you like the video, please click like, please subscribe to my channel. And please leave comments below on what you liked or disliked about the beta or what you want to see in the future. Or if there's changes that you know you really want to see, go ahead and let me know about them and I will reply to them as I can. Thank you. Have a great day. Bye-bye.